Hey, what's up mortals? It's Tall Dragon here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 6 of What If Deku Was Evil. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So let's begin. Zuku sprinted through the thick underbrush, thorns and branches tearing through his clothes and ripping at his skin as tears flowed freely down his face. He didn't know what to do now. His mentor and one of the only people he respected was now in police custody, or even worse, dead. He burst through the door to the small building where he had been hiding, and collapsed to the floor, gasping for air in between sobs. When he had finally regained his composure, he sat up and leaned against the small table stand that set up for their meals in the main room. He sat there for what felt like eternity, reliving the night's events and trying to come up with a plan on what to do next. He wanted to take revenge on the heroes for what they did to Stain, but without Stain's training and guidance, he knew he didn't stand a chance yet. He stared up through the small skylight on the ceiling, watching the clouds move across the starlit sky. Maybe he should just go home, give up and turn himself in for the things he did, and accept that he would never see the heroes brought to their knees. Izuku was pulled from his thoughts by the sound of heavy footsteps outside. He grabbed his staff and positioned himself next to the door. He wouldn't give up to the heroes without a fight, no matter how futile his efforts were. The door crashed open, hitting the wall so hard it nearly came off its hinges, but no one entered the room. Izuku finally peeked around the corner, but he didn't see the police, the heroes, or anyone in the doorway. Instead, lying on the ground was Stain's unconscious, motionless body. Izuku fell to his knees, throwing his weapon aside before rolling Stain over. His face was smeared with blood, and his body was badly burned. His outfit was in tatters, seared pieces of fabric barely hanging on. Izuku checked his pulse and found only a faint heartbeat. Stain's breathing was shallow and filled with pain. It was a slow and careful process, but Izuku managed to get Stain's injured body into the bed in the small bedroom. He locked all the doors and windows, pulling the curtains closed to keep from drawing any police suspicion to the small cabin in the middle of the forest. He carefully cleaned the blood off of Stain's face and began bandaging the terrible burns that scarred his body. Convinced he had done all that he could, Izuku quickly fell into a restless sleep in the chair on the opposite side of the room. He dreamed of flames engulfing him and then the feel of cold chains on his wrist in an even colder cell. He was woken by the sounds of Stain coughing and cursing and almost instantly at the bedside. He stood over him, tears welling in his eyes again, waiting for orders on what to do next, but Stain was silent. I'm glad to see you got away. Stain finally broke the silence, his voice raspy and seething with anger. What shitty luck. Stain, what happened after I ran? How did you get away? I was sure you were. Izuku trailed off, not wanting to speak the words into existence. We fought for a while, and I landed a lucky cut to his leg. I was able to paralyze him long enough to escape, but only barely. When the adrenaline wore off, I collapsed in the middle of the forest, and just had enough energy to drag myself to the door. Stain tried to sit up, but fell back onto the bed, gasping with pain. The entire city is on high alert now. We won't be going anywhere for at least a week. But given my condition, that may be for the best. Are you... you... are you going to be okay, Stain? Izuku was full of worry. Stain had escaped, but he was still badly injured, and couldn't go to a hospital without being recognized. Stain looked at the amateur bandaging on his body and chuckled. If this is the best you could do, I'm not so sure. Looks like a week away from the field will be good for you, too. You need to learn some new tricks. The joking demeanor of Stain was unexpected but comforting to Izuku. They sat in the room in silence, both lost in their own thoughts. Stain thinking about his next move, wondering what went wrong and how they got caught so easily. And Izuku worrying about Stain's condition and hoping he would be able to do enough to speed up his recovery. It started to rain outside, and soon, the sound of the rain on the windows outside lulled them both back to sleep. Izuku woke up before Stain. The early morning light barely streamed through the curtains. It had stopped raining, and the birds were outside chirping happily. If it wasn't for the bandaged body in the bed, he could have convinced himself last night was all just a bad dream. He grabbed a protein bar from the shelf in the kitchen, and his staff from the floor where he had thrown it the night before, and went outside. He ate his breakfast on the front deck of the cabin, listening to the sounds of the forest around him. When he had finished, he picked up his staff and went to a nearby tree. He may have managed to meet Stain in the previous training session, but he still had much to learn about fighting. 
He positioned himself in front of the tree and imagined the massive figure of Endeavor as he trained. Spinning his staff, he continued to drill, striking the legs and the arms, ducking and weaving around imaginary attacks and countering with his own. He beat at the tree until he could barely move, his muscles aching and his lungs burning. He turned to go check on Stain and saw him leaning against the doorframe watching him. Your movements are getting better, but you can't fight opponents that don't fight back forever, Izuku. Izuku noticed Stain's sword in his hand. Stain, you can't fight right now. You're injured badly. I'm surprised you were even capable of making it out of bed into the door in your current condition. Izuku left his training tree and walked over to where Stain was waiting. I can always fight, kid. Especially against someone as clumsy as you. Living and fighting alone, you learn to heal quickly and get back to work. Stain pushed himself off the doorframe and drew his sword. Now we fight for real. Same as before. Try to hit me. Izuku was hesitant to attack and still exhausted from his solo training on the tree. He didn't want to hurt Stain further, but he was also afraid of the damage Stain might inflict on him. He held his staff out in front of him, shaking slightly. Izuku quickly learned the difference in fighting amateurs and professionals. His previous bouts with Bakugo and Mandalay had been under favorable conditions against inexperienced or weakened opponents. Stain was a professional, and even badly injured, he was more than a match for him. Izuku swung his staff towards Stain, but the staff was deflected effortlessly, and Izuku felt a slight burning in his leg. Stain had slid the staff off the flat of his blade and sliced downward, leaving a shallow cut on Izuku's thigh. It wasn't much more than a scratch, but Izuku felt his body seize up and he fell to the ground, unable to move. Stain gently tapped him on the head with the point of his sword. Dead, he said matter-of-factly. Stop hesitating, you won't hurt me. In fact, I don't think you'll even manage to hit me. When the paralysis wore off, Izuku stood back up, stretching out his cramping muscles. He picked up his staff and swung it a few times, and they began again. It was the same story almost every time they sparred. Stain would deflect a few attacks and then, fast as lightning, land a scratch to Izuku and paralyze him. Each time he announced Izuku was dead. Izuku began to feel his confidence drop. If he couldn't do this against an injured solo opponent, how did he ever hope to accomplish his goals? Finally, Stain sheathed his sword. Fine. I'll fight you unarmed. No quirk, no weapon, same win conditions. Stain half smirked, half grimaced. Izuku took a deep breath and studied Stain's unarmed fighting position. It was as flawless as when he was armed, almost no holes in his defense. Izuku took a little longer to breathe, and then launched his attack. Stain did his usual dodging around the staff, predicting Izuku's attacks and moving around them. Izuku thrust his staff hard towards Stain's chest in an attempt to catch him off guard, but Stain simply parried the staff aside, stepping into gain leverage and close distance. He drove his knee hard into the inside of Izuku's thigh, causing his legs to buckle. He tried to sweep Stain with his other leg, but Stain simply stopped it with his foot and then stepped on it, pushing it into the wet ground. He never threw a decisive strike, however. He stood there waiting on Izuku's next move. Izuku swung his staff up towards Stain, trying to break free of his poor position, but his attack was predictable, and Stain simply caught the staff from his weak attack. He pulled back with his other fist. It was over, Izuku thought. He'd lost again. Stain sighed. You gave up already. The fight isn't over and you've given up. Is that what you plan to do every time you're outmatched? Surrender? You won't make it anywhere if that's the case. Stain's voice was sharp with disappointment. You have to plan moves ahead. You can't improvise every step of your fight. You have to make me move where you want, so you can attack how you want. This whole fight, I've been forcing you to attack in ways I can counter. And you've fallen right into it. The thrust into the parry, the need to force you to buckle into a sweep that was stopped, the desperate swing up to free yourself. That was all my plan, not yours. And you'll never win in a fight where you play into your opponent's plan. Izuku realized now what Stain was talking about. His attacks had been linear, singular. Throw one attack, it didn't work. Try another attack. Failed. He wasn't stringing anything together. He wasn't forcing Stain to move into positions where he could be hit with other attacks. But I'm sore and hungry now. Let's go inside and find lunch and get some rest while we plan our next moves. Stain let go of the staff and stepped off of Izuku's leg before turning and walking to the cabin. Izuku sat there a moment, processing everything Stain had told him and thinking of new ideas to win the next time they fought. He felt like a better fighter already, despite losing over and over. 
Finally, he stood up and followed Stan inside. They spent the rest of the night talking about their lives, the fights they've been in, their parents and families, or lack thereof, their plans for the future and grand ideas. The night went by quickly, and soon they both said their good nights and went to bed. Izuku was happier than he had been in his entire life. He had someone who had shared his ideas and beliefs. He was experienced and willing to train him, and someone he would one day be able to call his partner. He fell asleep, a smile on his face, and slept dreamlessly through the night. He would figure out how to win without a quirk, even if it took him years of hard training and mistakes. He wouldn't give up. He couldn't afford to. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already, but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description. Our discord is an all-around fantastic place to be, whether you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and have a great day.